Litany of Gratitude After the COVID Pandemic Let us approach the Lord who makes all things new for all the blessings and graces we received during the COVID pandemic. After every petition, let us say together, Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. For reminding us of the fragility of life, shielding us when no one else dared to shelter us, and opening our minds to what is really essential, let us thank the Lord. Thanks be to God. For allowing us to connect with one another with faith and love, despite the isolation that sickness had imposed on us, let us thank the Lord. Thanks be to God. For the heroic kindness of those who provided us with scientific, social, and spiritual help, when doing so was both risky and life-threatening for them. Let us thank the Lord. Thanks be to God. For the gift of newly discovered medicines and vaccines to combat the virus and the wonder of natural immunity, let us thank the Lord. Thanks be to God. For the gift of assuring presence when we were anxious and distressed, depressed and lonely and impatient during the pandemic. Let us thank the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Loving God, no thought of ours is unknown to you. No tear we shed is unimportant to you. No joy we celebrate is alien to you. You entered our world of sickness, suffering, and death, and you know the fears we face. Accept our thanksgiving for your provident love during the COVID pandemic. As you wept at the death of Lazarus, breathe the breath of life everlasting on all those who died from the coronavirus. You have turned our fears into joy, and for this we thank and praise you. To you be glory now and forever. Mary, help of Christians, pray for us. Saint Michael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray, pray for us. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Please stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, the disciples encountered the risen Lord. And every encounter with Jesus is a healing encounter. Let our encounter with Jesus in the Eucharist be also a healing encounter with our risen Lord. To prepare ourselves to celebrate this Holy Mass, let us first acknowledge our sins and humbly ask the Lord for His pardon and strength. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. 
Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on, on earth, earth peace to, to people of, of goodwill. goodwill. We, we praise, praise you, we bless you, you we adore you, you we glorify you, you. We, we give, give you, you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, God heavenly King, King O God, God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who gladden us year by year with the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection, graciously grant that by celebrating these present festivities, we may merit through them to reach eternal joys. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter and John were going up to the temple area for the three o'clock hour of prayer. And a man crippled from birth was carried and placed at the gate of the temple called the beautiful gate every day to beg for alms from the people who entered the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked for alms. But Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, Look at us. He paid attention to them, expecting to receive something from them. Peter said, I have neither silver nor gold, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, rise and walk. Then Peter took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles grew strong. He leaped up, stood and walked around, and went into the temple with them, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the one who used to sit, begging at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with amazement and astonishment at what had happened to him. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, invoke his name make known among the nations his deeds sing to him sing his praise proclaim all his wondrous deeds rejoice O hearts that seek the Lord glory in his holy name rejoice O hearts that seek the Lord look to the Lord in his strength seek to serve him constantly Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. 
you descendants of Abraham, his servants, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones. He, the Lord, is our God. Throughout the earth, his judgments prevail. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. He remembers forever his covenant, which he made binding for a thousand generations, which he entered into with Abraham and by his oath to Isaac. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Please stand. the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus. And they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophet spoke! Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us 
while He spoke to us on the way and opened the Scriptures to us. So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, as we continue our joy this Easter season, we are listening to the gospel passages of what we call the resurrection appearances. Ang mga kwento ng pagpapakita ni Jesus na muling nabuhay sa kanyang mga alagad. And we see that every encounter of Jesus with the disciples are always a healing encounter. Tuwing makikipagtagpo si Jesus sa kanyang mga alagad, ito ay isang pakikipagtagpo na nakapagpapagaling. And here in the two stories today, we see not only a healing of body, but a healing of stories, healing of memories. Pinagaling ni Jesus, hindi lamang ang sakit ng katawan, kundi pinagaling din ni Jesus ang mga masakit na alaala, ang mga masakit na kwento. Kayo ba? Meron ba kayong mga masakit na alaala? Madalas, yan pa nga ang mas masakit at mas matagal gumaling. Many times, painful memories and painful stories take a longer time to heal and they cause much more pain in us. We see in the Gospel reading today the story of the two disciples going to Emmaus and they carried with them the painful memory of Jesus being crucified in Jerusalem. That is why three days have already passed as they were walking to Emmaus they were not able to recognize Jesus because of the painful memories they were carrying in their hearts and in their minds. That is why Jesus encountered them and healed the painful memories they are carrying within them. And that is also what the disciples did Peter and John, in our first reading today, when they healed the crippled man, they did not only heal him physically, but they also healed the story that he was carrying. The people knew him as the crippled man who sat at the gate of the temple, begging but when they saw him, they were amazed and they changed their story. He was not anymore the crippled man. He was now the healed man through the name of Jesus. My dear brothers and sisters, we encounter Jesus today in this Eucharist. Let us entrust to Jesus whatever painful memory we have. Mga minamahal na kapatid, anuman ang mga masakit na alaala na daladala mo sa puso mo, ibigay mo na yan kay Jesus. Sapagkat yan ang nais pagalingin ni Jesus. 
Minsan nga, yan pa ang ayaw nating bitawan at ayaw nating pagalingin. Minsan, pag may nakasakit sa atin o may nakaaway tayo, sinasabi natin, habang buhay ko nang tatandaan yang ginawa mo sa akin. No? Ganyan tayo magsalita. No? Wala na akong kaibigan, tatandaan ko yan habang buhay. Yan ang mga ayaw nating pagalingin. Let us entrust all of these painful stories, painful memories to Jesus because that is what Jesus wants to heal. My dear brothers and sisters, for the past days, I have been watching in the news, there had been a violence, conflict in the Holy Land these past days nagkakagulo po sa Holy Land between Jews, Muslims, even Christians. All of this because they have painful memories. Let us bring, let us entrust to Jesus whatever painful stories and painful memories we have because the risen Lord wants to heal us not only physically, He wants to heal our hearts and minds. Amen. Please stand. Recalling how the disciples on the road to Emmaus recognize Jesus in the breaking of the bread, we pray to God the Father for a deeper appreciation of the risen Christ as our spiritual food for the journey through life. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Pope and the bishops may effectively proclaim the message of hope by their holy lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That government leaders may bring hope and light to our people by their dedication to public service. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may understand why Christ had to suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick may be healed and be strengthened by the reception of the Eucharist, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That the dead may enjoy the fullness of life in the company of the risen Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, grant us the deep faith necessary to recognize your Son in all situations we experience in life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
Please stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy Church. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the sacrifice which has redeemed the human race and be pleased to accomplish in us salvation of mind and body through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate 
the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am not, not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Please stand. Let us pray. We pray, O Lord, that the reverent reception of the sacrament of your Son may cleanse us from our old ways and transform us into a new creation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a few announcements. Again, our reminder and also our invitation to everyone for our events these coming days. Tomorrow, we will have our Easter concert entitled Risen to be uh, performed for us by the Philippine Suzuki Youth Orchestra. This Easter concert will be at 6.30 p.m. tomorrow evening here at the Manila Cathedral. You may purchase your tickets online for this Easter concert. And then on Friday at 12 noon, the 12 noon Mass will be the installation Mass of our new rector, Monsignor Rolly de la Cruz, and it will be presided by His Eminence Jose Cardinal Advincula. On that evening, Friday evening, we will be welcoming the relics of St. Therese here at the Manila Cathedral. The Welcome Mass will be at 6.30 p.m. to be presided by our new rector then, Monsignor Rolly. And then after the Mass, we will be having the veneration of relics 
until 11 p.m. in the evening of that day. The following day, uh, Saturday, we will open early at 6 a.m. for those who may still want to venerate the relic. And then at 7.30 a.m. Mass, we will be celebrating the farewell Mass for the relic. And it will be transferred, the relics will be transferred to the Ina ng Laging Saklolo Parish in Punta Santa Ana, Manila. Our host for this evening's Healing Rosary is the Santissima Trinidad Parish in Malate, Manila. We thank Father Jack Arada, their parish priest, for hosting this evening's Healing Rosary. Let us all stand and receive the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Oh.